Hi everybody, today I thought I would show you how to make this um, bubble style necklace design. It's really easy to put together and um, just use some round, some wire, some silk thread um, and a few tools. So I'm going to get started by showing you what sort of tools we're going to be using. Right, so these are the tools we're going to be using today. So I've got two of my chain nose pliers, just because you're going to be needing them to opening and closing the jump rings. Um, then we've got our wire cutters, which I used to cut the um, the wires, the findings that we're going to be using to add the, um, the rounds. And then obviously this is a crimp pair of pliers this is used to bend the um the crimps that we have in place um, i'll show you later once we get started um all right so let's get going with the uh, materials next okay so this is what we're going to be using material wise so there we have our findings um these are the type of posts that we're going to be using to attach the rounds to our silk um these are called um bull head findings okay so these are used for that you can generally use them to make earrings as well with and um, they're quite handy to have in your stash so i would always recommend to have some on hand then obviously we've got our jump rings we're going to be using and then importantly these ones are the crimp beads and um, these are used for two things in this design and um, they're used to show to attach the beads the jump rings to the actual silk um, and then they're also used to tie off the ending and then we'll crimp one of those shuts to trap the silk um, but i'll show you once we get to it and then later on we're going to be cutting a piece of chain and we're going to be adding it to the um to the end of the silk um for gemstones i've got two different colors of um rounds and it just these are two graduated strands so there's one soda light and one jadeite absolutely beautiful and they're perfect for this sort of design so in my in my necklace i've only used two sizes but obviously you can um you can you know play around and use different sizes and see what you like and lastly we've got our natural silk which is lovely to work with um, in this case I've used the 0.6 which is perfect for this as well because it's, it's fine enough to actually thread on and these beads really have quite a generous drill hole as well so even much thicker silk will go through that just have to take care if you have any thicker, thicker silk how is that for <laughs> for a um, difficult sentence that they actually go through the um, the crimp beads okay so these are the materials so let's get started with the actual project right first things first we're going to have to stretch the silk because when you take it off so this type of silk comes with a needle in built already which is really handy um, so you have your little needle there at the front it's a little bit bent here so straighten it up but the thing is with the silk when you take it off um the actual packaging it comes a little bit kinked okay so what you're going to have to need to do is the way i do it you be very careful that you don't pull on the needle itself but you wrap your finger around one end and you go a little bit further and all you do is you kind of give it a tug and you move further along and what that does it gets rid of all the kinks so now you have your silk that's nice and straight and you can be working with this now generally um, I'd say to cut your cords but because there's a needle attached to it and it's quite difficult to thread it onto different needles I would say to actually use this in one length okay so we're going to have to thread all of our beads towards the end of the silk um, I'm just going to use a shorter piece already to demonstrate because it'll be easier for me to show you on camera but if you want to use with uh, want to work with one length of silk I'd recommend that you thread all of your beads on to the end and then always work towards the end of the actual thread so that you don't have to cut sections off and then try and thread on a needle uh, if you're using very fine beads okay cut a short section here to be able to show you nicely um, all right, so what we need to do is find the midpoint of the um, 
the cord we're going to be using. So I'd recommend to go around about 45 centimeters, just long enough so that you can actually maneuver it. Um, or else you have to go, if you're going to use the silk in one continuous length, remember to go to one end and then measure 45 centimeters from there. Okay, so once you've done that, we need to locate the midpoint of the silk. And we need to attach what we've got here, um, the jump ring. So we're going to go through the one crimp bead on one side, like so. And then we're going to capture the jump ring. And we're going to go back out the crimp bead. Whoops. Like so. What this does, and just make sure that the two ends, once they have actually gone through the crimp bead, are the same length. So both cords need to be the same length. So what this does, it actually traps the jump ring in place. So the next step is to tie just a very simple overhand knot. I'm going to pull that tight. And then I just like to do a second one to make sure this doesn't open up again. And what that does, it traps this in place now the best thing to create the next knot in line okay is to bring in so you can either create something on paper where you draw out these other one centimeter so if you have a macrame board which is really handy to have you can use the grid which is at the back and what I do for that is I take a needle and I go through one of the knots like so and depending on what dif the distance you want, I've gone about two centimeters in each. Um, I then do the same again. So I'm going to go and use, you can even go with the end that doesn't have the needle because the, um, the actual um, holes are quite, quite big enough to feed it through. So then we have our jump ring here, I'm going to go through that. And then back out through the crimp. So we need to pull that. And then because it's quite loose, you can still maneuver it. And because we've got a pin through the first knot, we can then place the second one. So now it's a little bit more tricky to actually tie this off. So you just need to be careful, maneuver it. And then once it's there, and make sure that you don't actually move the knot slightly. So there we have it. So that's once, and we're going to do the same again. Pin it down. And we just want to make sure that it doesn't move. So anyway, I would create another knot. So this is what it would look like. And you would do this until you have seven of these in total. Seven because I quite like to have a central one. And um, it always makes sense when you have a necklace like that for me anyway, to have a, a focal pendant, a focal stone, which in this case I have used one of the beautiful jadeites to actually be at the center because it's a different color so this one will will draw the eye and then these are attached to that now to finish off this actual necklace so you would have to decide on where you would like to add the chain and how long you want that section to be okay so we're just going to do exactly the same as we did before and we're going to just add a jump ring so i'm going to bring one in like so and then as before we're going to go through the actual bead right and then we're going to bring in the crimp tool that i was talking about earlier i'm going to show you it's got little grooves we bring these up you can actually see the little grooves okay so this little groove at the end which a little ridge is going to go in and we're going to press slight, ever so slightly not too hard otherwise you can damage the actual crimp so what this does it creates like a little ridge I'm going to remove this now so that you can see better so this creates like a little ridge and then we're going to use the front of the crimping tool and press it together and that secures the actual 
jumping in place and this is really quite tight and secure and then you can just trim off so for now I'm just going to trim it short um, I'm going to do it neater later on I just don't want to risk it coming undone which it actually won't it's quite tight but you just never know and I'll finish it off later so the next step is to add your little baubles so for that you can pick any size b it doesn't really matter and we're going to use one of these head pins ball head pins and i'm going to feed it through my bead like so and there's a very simple little design use one of our chain nose pliers and bend this at a 90 degree angle like so and then we're going to bring in our round nose pliers i think i haven't mentioned earlier if I'm not sure but you need your round nose pliers and bring these in and bend this wire around until you roughly meet the bead and then what you need to do is take your pliers and flip them up a bit so that the wire can actually travel a little bit further like so and this creates like a little loop the next step is bring back your chainless pliers, grab hold of this and then very simply wrap these around. So if you have access wires you can create a little bit of a design feature like a bead cap almost on top of the bead. So if you make the little neck shorter you have, bit, have a bit more of a length to do this with and then all we need to do is trim off the excess wire and then all that's left to do is at the end here we are going to add in our chain so we've got a chain section here you can decide how long so you would open up you would get your second pliers second pair of pliers open this up feed this on and then just simply to close these jump rings, you just very gently wiggle them until they are firm. Because you need to really make sure that they're nice and snug closed because the, the thread's quite fine. And it, if it's not closed properly, it can actually slip out. And obviously we'll do the same to attach these beads to the jump rings as well. And then you're left with a necklace that you can wear. So you have these all attached and you would add all of your findings and this is how easy it is to to make this necklace and it's quite effective so um yep, i hope you enjoyed this and thank you for watching